B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. I'm B2B Cambodia's Darshana. Thanks for watching. Today we're speaking with Mr. Christoph Forcinetti, the founder and chairman of Ober Capital. Mr. Forcinetti has 18 years of investment experience in emerging markets, particularly in Southeast Asia, and founded Ober Capital in Cambodia in 2016. Hi, thank you so much for speaking with us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Could I get your general reflections on 2023 regarding Cambodia's investment landscape? Yes, I think everybody agree that 2023 was a difficult year. Uh, we thought after COVID we were out of the woods, but uh, actually no. With the increase of uh, interest rates uh, everywhere, the uh, the almost recession. Um, I mean, 2023. Uh, definitely was a, a bad year. We've seen an increase in the uh, non-performing loans of financial inst institutions, a decrease of the garment uh, export. The good thing is that some other products actually uh, increased. So uh, I think overall, it was not a, an overall decrease of export, but uh, um, still negative. No tourism, uh, construction and real estate really uh, going down. So uh, I think it was a, we can agree that it was a, a bad year. What initially attracted you to the Cambodian market and how has your investment journey been in the country so far? So the reason why I came is uh, I'm of Cambodian origin, so that was the, the, the first, let's say, uh, reason. But uh, if, you look at, if you look in the streets, you see opportunities everywhere. Uh, you're thinking uh, that, that there's a very small middle class, but uh, that, that, that very young population will become a middle class. and. Uh, they, they want consumption, they want a motorcycle, a car, a phone, and, and you can see a lot of uh, opportunities for, for services and, and products. And so that's, I think, what um, really intrigued me at the beginning. Um, I have to say, we went through a learning curve because timing is very important, demand is very important, and as I said, middle class is very small, so, um, it's, it's, it's hard to find the right opportunities. Apart from this, great country, uh, dollarized, easy to do business in. I have some activities, investment activities in Indonesia, Vietnam, or Thailand, and I really think Cambodia is, is, is a great country for, for investment. Regarding the opportunities that you see here, what sectors or industries do you think hold the most promise in the current investment landscape and why? Cambodia has a base for export. Labor is... is uh, it's pretty affordable, so that's a, that's a very strong point. We have some issues to solve on the logistic, on the, 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 the cost of energy, of course, but uh, we're ideally lo located, and I think the government is taking all the uh, appropriate steps to have some incentives uh, in the investment law and, uh, and through those uh, special economic zones. Locally, what, what works, uh, anything that you know, the bottom of the pyramid needs. Uh, so I would say anything related to infrastructure, water, um, energy, agriculture, because it's 75% rural. Mm -hmm. So not easy, but uh, there's definitely a need uh, at all those level, uh, financial inclusion, financial services mm -hmm. for that population as well. And kind of regionally speaking, how would you say Cambodia is situated in the broader investment landscape, uh, especially if you had to compare to neighboring countries like Vietnam, Thailand, and Laos? So th the main difference is the, uh, the, the size of the market and, and the fact that uh, the middle class is still very narrow. Um, Vietnam is 100 million people, so subsequently the, uh, the middle class is much bigger. Um, Thailand has had since the uh, the 90s or the 80s uh, a very strong growth. So uh, same there, and uh, in in each of those countries you have institutional investors, large companies, um, international or not, mm -hmm. that are established and, uh, and 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 operate. We don't have this in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. You still don't have when you talk to institutional investors. They have no appetite yet for Cambodia. Too small <clears throat> uncertainty on the regulatory framework. They like the stability, the political stability, and that's really something uh, uh, very important. But apart from this, there's a, there is a little bit of work that needs to be done to, uh, to explain that actually Cambodia is growing fast. 
um, and, uh, and has the potential even for larger institutional investors and companies to, uh, to operate. So I want to now shift to discussing Obor and kind of your experience uh, in investing here in Cambodia, as well as in fund management. Um, so what criteria do you follow to guide your investment decisions and what types of projects or ventures have you been involved with here? One of the key thing, because we've made the mistake several times, um, we had to get very much involved because the team was not, uh, let's say, um, fully independent. Mm. So you have good entrepreneurs, they're good in operations, but anything related to governance, finance, tax, legal, uh, raising capital, um, organization, it's, it's hard to find entrepreneurs that have this. It's, it's hard for them to find resources here. So mm -hmm. we had to develop that internally and, uh, and support them. So the issue is that you end up spending a lot of time for each company you've invested in. Mm -hmm. And it's a great learning process, but it takes time. It's time consuming. Um, in the end, when I arrived in Cambodia, I thought you know, I would invest and sit on the board and wait for dividends to come. It doesn't work like this. You have to be extremely involved. Um, so that was probably the main aspect because this has an impact on everything. As a fund manager, um, if you're first, if you're making small investments and you have to spend time on them and resources, you, you cannot make a living. Right. So you have to find the balance between the size of the investments, the, the maturity of those companies, and making sure they have a team so that you're not involved all the time for everything to make, in the end, your investment profitable.